It's our round table and we're having a chat about some of the tensions we've been seeing on our streets, tensions between locals and African migrants. We're speaking about the operation to doulas that exist where citizens are so hurtful that they have no other way that they see forward but to take action themselves. We are joined by several experts to try and make sense of this. Uh, I'm joined by Professor Lauren Lando, from this, a senior researcher from the African Center for Migration and Society at WITS. I've got another senior researcher, a specialist at the Human Sciences Research Council, that's Dr. Stephen Gordon. I have Madi Boiti, okay, to me, Madiba, who's a commentator who's pro the Dudula movement. I also have a lot of your calls. Tabang out in Melville, I've got you. You want to speak to Professor Lando's comments? Yes, hi, Sidi. Um, sure. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you um, are. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think uh, both uh, uh, Dr. Professor Landau and uh, Dr. Gordon touched on this point about uh, pan-Africanism. Uh, I've got a few points. I hope I can be, uh, I'll, I'll be allowed to work through them. First I'm not trying to indulge you, but you've got to try and make it tight, please. There's so many yeah. calls I want to get through. Uh, yeah. Pan-African, why, why are, why is like pan-African, pan-Africanism being forced down our throat to say like there's not enough pan-Africanism and South Africans don't, or it's, it's not as, deeply entrenched as it should be because i'd like to rebut that and like if you look at uh the usa as a country it's part of a continent but they treat themselves like a, a whole continent uh, not as uh, uh, isolated from canada but specifically mexico and all you have to do is like uh, watch the shows about the u.s border between uh, Mexico and uh, the U.S. even go back to Donald Trump. I mean, there wasn't much halabalu about the northern border between um, what uh, Canada and uh, the USA. Canadians move freely as as they please between the U.S. and Canada. The second point is that uh, I, I I I find it problematic that he says this is about township government. If they, if, if he does proper research, he'll see that most immigrants don't even live in the township, mm. first, you know. Uh, number two, this is about, and like, um, the guy from, uh, who's it, uh, Boiti. This is Boy, South Africa has an, yeah, South Africa does have an immigration problem. All you have to do is look at the bike, bike bridge border, you know, or what is supposed to be a border. I mean, there's a whole hullabaloo about a fence that was supposed to be erected and, mm. you know, I mean, we, we know the story. So, so to say there's no immigration problem is a, is a fallacy. Which other country in the world can you just walk in and do as you please, when you please, how you please? And then the, 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 another thing is that uh, let, let them uh, give us stats on, like, uh, for example, not not even we don't even know how many numbers you know it's 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 all guesswork okay tell let, me let, let them give us that about like for example sorry city how many public how many immigrants are using for example the public health system you know that's a big issue that's actually raised year and year by the Gauteng Premier. I want to cut you to give him a chance to respond because there's so many things to try and get through Tabang and Melville. Thank you so much for that. Professor Lando, just to speak to some of the issues that Tabang is raising, you know, saying that you are incorrect to say that there is no immigration problem in the country and obviously speaks about Pan-Africanism. And I think, Dr. Stephen, you can come in afterwards. Um, people feel that they're being force-fed Pan-Africanism. -Af Pan So I think from my side, I mean, it, clearly there is a migration crisis, but it is a crisis that is being made, it's being framed, right? And it is being framed intentionally by those who would like to divert attention away from the failing of government to provide economic security, to, pro to do proper urban planning, to do electricity, to fight corruption within government. This is a, 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 this is a fabrication, right? Immigrants are not the reason South Africans are jobless. In some instances, yes. Immigrants are not the reason we have crime in South Africa. Again, yes, there are criminals who are immigrants. But most crime in South Africa is done by South African citizens against other South African citizens. This is a framing. So, yes, it is a crisis in the sense that that is how people understand it. But if we got rid of all of these immigrants, if we did a big thought experiment, where does that leave us in terms of jobs? Where does it leave us in terms of health services? Where does it leave us in terms of security? We wouldn't even know the difference. 
he'd probably be worse off. There's just not that many immigrants in the country to cause the problems that we have. So this is being constructed, is being supported, is being put out there as a way to gain political support, support and divert attention away from the country's real problems. Professor Stephen, just to come in on the issue of Pan-Africanism being forced down our throats, I wonder if also there's a question of recognizing that the adult population is too far gone. We've got a set in entrenched views and understanding of each other as a people, as Africans, and how we relate to one another, and that the focus should actually be on kids. Is it a t- is, 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 Do we tilt the lens and look at what must be done as far as education at a lower level is concerned? Or does Tabang have a point that actually you're force-feeding us Pan-Africanism, and we shouldn't be doing that either? Pan-Africanism as an intellectual movement promotes intergroup cooperation, multiculturalism, solidarity. Pan-Africanism was one of the main reasons that the anti-apartheid movement was able to triumph over the forces of evil. It's very hard to see the downside of of pan-Africanism. It all seems to be upsides if one looks at the evidence. Um, In terms of the immigration crisis, I just want to remind our viewers that the number of immigrants coming into South Africa has lessened over the last four years. Indeed, many immigrants have left South Africa. Um, Estimates place the international migrant population in South Africa at half a million less in 2022 than it was in 2019. So if there's an immigration crisis, it's because we have fewer immigrants, not not more immigrants. But on the issue of pan-Africanism, South Africa as a nation, as a state, is very supportive of pan-African ideals. We benefit from regional integration. The the pan-African free trade agreement, for example, will be extremely beneficial to the South African economy at a time when we need to grow our nation at a time when we need investment, at a time when we need people to come and start businesses, employ people, and grow the economy. Pan-African free trade and pan-Africanism generally will be very, very important to rebuilding South Africa after the ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. And we should embrace that fact. All right, thank you, Doctor. Mashwa Mula in Oliver Bosch, I think in the last call I'm able to take, we are fast running out of time. Your issue is the South African Constitution, am I correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, evening to you and to your guests today. Uh, before I get to that, just quickly, you see the problem with uh, professors and doctors and whoever who come here and analyze the situation from afar not with us on the ground here. They don't live among us, these people that are not in this situation. They don't know what we are going through on a daily basis. You see, that's the first problem. So whatever they say, they are wrong because they don't know the real situation. See, but I think the Constitution is the problem here because it says all people who live here, this country belongs to them. You've got two foreigners there phoning in and giving us advice as to how we should run our country. Why don't they go back to their country and give advice to their country as to how they should run their country so that they don't run away from their country? I mean, this country is a mess right now, and we are trying to fix it because those who are in power fail to fix this country. And so we are taking it upon ourselves to fix this mess. And one day I'm telling you this, too. The situation will be bad because the police will be forced to turn against us and then we'll turn against the government because this is the one that is taking us on this issue. I think the situation is going to be bad. I think we disagree on how it's going, why and how it's going to be bad, but I agree with you on one thing. The situation is untenable. We are headed for, I think, I just see disaster. Dumi, I want to bring you into the conversation again very quickly. The issues of unemployment. What do you guys like? First, no, before I actually come to Dumi, Professor Lando, I know my time with you is up. Let me give you an opportunity to please give us your parting shots quickly. Well, I just want to thank you for this discussion. I think it really illustrates the degree to which people are seeing this in very different ways. And that highlights the need for leadership from whether it's MC or at the national level, but at the township level, for people to say, look, 
this is not how this country is going to be governed. We are going to draw attention to the real problems that you face and develop plans to address those rather than make excuses and blame foreigners for them. That's not going to take us anywhere, and that's only going to lead us, as you say, to greater violence and, and greater suffering among people who are indeed struggling. Uh, thank you so much. That's researcher at the Af senior researcher at the African Center for Migration and Society at Vets University, Professor Lauren Nando. To me, I want to come back to you now, Madi Boiti. Yes. They all keep saying the same thing over and over again. All our experts say the same thing over and over again that no matter what happens with the undocumented citizens or what happens with migrants, and I understand the issue of undocumented citizens and the issue of legality, that speaks again to a failing, gov a failed government, actually. I think we must stop calling it a failing government. We've seen that they failed at the job. He, they all say that no matter what you do, or if you drive them out of the country, that doesn't change our situation. It doesn't change the fact that we are in trouble and that unemployment is a cause for concern. What is your response to that? Because that's as we speak to me, part of what's driving people towards these particular movements is you've created these problems in our country. If we get rid of you, we'll get rid of the problems. In fact, I think it's Dr. Stephen who argued the issues could actually be worse once you've driven all the African migrants out of the country. I think you're going to have to be very patient with me because you're not giving me a chance. We're running out of time. It was the callers, though, okay. doing me. But, but it was I'm the callers. They're that. important. But also, we're running out of time. I want you to give me an answer. And then, no, 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 but, yeah. I need, but I need, I need to say something to you that we are saying people that come into the country, they must be booked at all ports of entry. They must be documented. I want to speak about my experience because you've given the professor, professor to speak about their academic researches. So I need to tell you, there was a time where I was a regional sales manager for an FNCG. I was responsible for 6,000 uh, shops in 2008. 98% of them were owned by South Africans. Immediately after 2010, those shops, 6,000 of them, 90% was now owned by foreign nationals. They did not have documents in 2010 when they took over those shops. Within two years, all of them were beginning to produce ID documents. Tell me, how do you get an ID document to become a cashier in a spaza? Raising is the same thing that the, the experts are raising, is that the issue is, is governance. Do you recognize that? I don't know if I've lost you, me. Hello? Hello? Hi, you're, you're back. I'm, I'm saying, do you recognize that even though you wanted to say it differently, you are looking at the same exact issue as the experts? I have run out of time, Timmy. I want to give you a very, like a very short time to give us your final thoughts before I go to Professor Stephen, to, uh, Dr. Stephen, rather, to also get his final th thoughts so that I can wrap the show. I have run out of time. What is short is that you guys in the media help us to push the message that there must be adherence to the immigration laws of South Africa. South Africa is a sovereign state. When we go to Zimbabwe, Mozambique, or wherever, we always make sure that we've got our passport and we are booked in. Let's make sure that we promote the rule of the law and let us not get led one another. We don't say we've got some foreigners that we need in the country, but we say it must be for scarcity skills. Because if you do not manage influence control, you are going to have a crisis. And if you keep on suppressing this issue, it is going to explode. We are saying, let's have a conversation, an honest conversation. Do not suppress our views in any way. We've got an immigration crisis. Some of us were on the ground. We've worked. Tell me. Can you go to, to me, remember, I said time. Party. You said your piece. You said we've got a crisis. You said we should not suppress you. I've let you come on air and say your piece. I've not suppressed you in any way. Dr. Stephen, your final thoughts as well. I've got about two minutes or so for you. Um, just what are your thoughts about the way forward? I'm interested in what do we do to try and counter what we, we all know is coming. We've been here before. As you can see, this is an issue that arises a lot of passion in our country. Mm, yes. Sometimes when we confront the issue of xenophobia, it's very easy to feel alone. But we must realize that there are large numbers of South Africans who share a very strong anti-xenophobia message. They do not believe that foreigners are inherently bad. They do not support xenophobic violence. They oppose xenophobic violence. We need to unite 
this large number of people. And as a community, we can push back against xenophobia. There are groups both within government as well as within civil society, which adopt a strong anti-xenophobia stance. We need to support their efforts. And if we do so, we can prevent the outbreak of anti-immigrant violence. A lot of this, unfortunately, has to fall on law enforcement. Law enforcement does do their job and respond efficiently and with great resolution to outbreaks of anti-immigrant violence, therefore preventing their spread. But ordinary people, you and I, mm. can also do a lot to prevent xenophobia by supporting those members of civil society who are dedicated to fighting this terrible scourge in our society. All right, thank you so much. That's Dr. Stephen Gordon, a senior researcher, specialist at the Human Sciences Research Council. We also had to Mima Diba, who's a commentator, who's pro the Tutula movement. The show is almost up, but what I want to actually point out, he spoke about law enforcement. Everyone pointed out issues around law enforcement. And it's interesting, I was speaking to my colleagues here at Eyewitness News, and it's interesting to see some of the responses we've gotten from SAPS around these issues. There is a response my colleague, Komoto Mudis, was doing a story, and literally there's a police spokesperson who then said, unfortunately, I'm not available. I believe that we are not at liberty as the SAPS to be continuously commenting to the media on a single protest. We have made the SAPS position clear with regards to Operation Tutula and the provincial commissioner has also commented on this numerous occasions. We have been, let me just see, I'm trying to get the message. We've been saying one and the same thing and our position will not change. That dismissive attitude comes from a police spokesperson. So when things go sideways, let's remember how they treated us. Let's remember that when we're looking for home affairs and things have gone sideways and that minister is also trying to get our attention. It's nine o'clock. My name is T. Madia, it's time for your news updates.